the princess and the call girl is soft co otter redly mad's girl's skin flick was an op mark twain's the prince and the popa it centers around a demure virginal chick who switches places with a looker like upscale prostitute so she can get some experience in before her wedding night predictably complications arise when they are unable to switch back in time for her engagement party this flick squanders a potentially awesome premise seriously you know you are in trouble when the scenes that set up the plot are far more interesting than the scenes of heavy breathing what's particularly damning about the princess and the call girl is that a lot of the love scenes don't feature much skin or happen off screen the thing that really pissed me off about the film is the fact that a lot of the love scenes are heavily built up but don't deliver take for example the lesbian massaging maid sequence it starts out hot and heavy with her rubbing her hands all over levy but then someone walks in on them and the maid scurries off why build up a potentially hot scene like this and then offer no good damn pay off this may be the first skin flick in the history of time that sets out to give its male audience blue balls i'd also like to point out that this movie originally debuted on the playboy channel the princess and the call girl is a 1984 american erotic comedy drama film directed by redley madsger and based on a french story frontus piece by pierre sabi that is similar to mark twain's novel the prince and the pauper two women who look alike one very rich and one very poor decide to briefly switch roles to see the consequences Film reviewer Gary Morris not that the star of the princess and the call girl film Carol Levy has some charming moments The film according to another reviewer is cheerfully fluffy and consistently erotic outside of his Henry Perry's titles stand as Mads Gers funniest achievement a fitting epilogue for the age of love freedom they may not make them like this anymore but as long as these films continue to be appreciated viewers can relive the experience and have quite a few good hearty laugh along the way according to one film reviewer redley mads girls films including those made during the golden age 
of hard films are noted for their lavish design which is screen plays and a ponson for the unusual camera angle another reviewer noted that his films were highly artistic and often cerebral and often featured gorgeous cinematography film and audio works by Metzger have been added to the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Lead actress Carol Levy is gorgeous and more importantly shows herself to be a capable actress. Carrying off the double roles of Audrey and Lucy with poise and charisma almost everything else in the movie works less well first the movie aims to be stylish and jet setting but the budget leaves a fair bit to be desired on the style front a lot of screen time is taken up sitting in the open air cafe and bars of nice sipping drinks or walking about its street also the tone is supposed to be that of a light love comedy but the pace of the movie is way too leisurely Comedies should not have this much dead time on screen plus the material is weak a few jokes work almost by accident but a typical episode of two and a half men manages to be funnier smarter and bodier than anything here Lastly the movie is almost totally lacking in erotic sizzle It's a love romp with most of the love missing or torn down Recently saw this film on video and it turns out to be merely the French dubbed version of Redley Mets Girls the Princess and the Call Girl light and frothy but not hot enough by a long shot film is hardly among the maestros better effort to the french dubbing credited to Gerard Loeb is very well done in terms of lip sync given the glamorous monte carlo setting to which our leading lady carol levy is whisked away to the french track pits and perhaps was considered an improvement by continental audiences levy is a striking actress whose very un familiarity She never got a career going is a plus. One suspect Mads Gerb was in a quandary by the time this film was produced in the Banjan Ing VHS era. As he had been used to being a trailblazer in erotica since his distribution a part of the early 1960s right through to his classic Henry Perry's hardcore film of the mid 70s resulting princess emerges as neither peace nor foul and definitely dairier guard 
when it comes to hard film really don't know what to make of this whole affair where in the end princess and call girl doesn't really add up to much as in its offering but you are glad you went on its ride the film is about to look alike trading profession over a night played competently by its lead whereas audrey o debutant she is much more memorable and striking spouting a catchy and cute tagline the catalyst is that the call girl has developed a crush on someone and has to be somewhere else after making plans to meet him where from here we sit back and watch the fun begin among some nudity and kinky love scenes a couple involving a threesome yes no one does it like lucy darling and hot lead levy indeed makes a lasting impression the best thing about the film where you feel she deserves better material the soft complex has its moment and style and in its own respect it's not a bad movie featuring one surprise star the late short lived actor scott plank as the smitten stud stanley just don't go looking for anything deep here redley mads goes south up a swinging 70s take on the prince and the pauper in princess and the call girl an overheated and sometimes charmingly clumsy tras flick the charms do not last long but the film still qualifies as an exploitative comedy curiosity that is neither steamy nor funny enough to be memorable the plot revolves around two high society doppelgangers who tread places to allow each to take care of business of both side of the atlantic the setup and story make little logical sense and act only as a foundation for ridiculous comedic dramatic and body situation it is all to dunder had it to be fun or watchable the production is limited but the european sites are neatly captured the performances could be worse but it is hard not to feel somewhat sorry for everyone involved princess and the call girl should earn points for attempting to be both literary and cheeky but the film never takes the time to get anything to work attempt at comedy fall flat and any social commentary here fall flatter this is a film audiences can afford to skip the final directorial effort of radley matsga the finest pavaya of erotica the cinema has ever known the charming if limited Carol Levy stars in a dual role as Manhattan socialite Aubrey Swallow and 
high class call girl Lucy Darling to old college friend who agreed to switch identities for a weekend Aubrey chats across Europe meeting Lucy's client but complications arise when Lucy has to fill in for Aubrey at the latest engagement party but the complication don't amount to much because this is a movie about having fun being happy and romance in tastefully photographed subcourse scenes i didn't have high hopes for this playboy channel production but i was pleasantly surprised it's pure redly nice european scenery witty dialogue sharp editing imaginative photography and a few reasonably low moments if you ask me this is the real nice coast cinema this us french soft core erotic drama was filmmaker redley mads girls first mainstream film since 1979's the cat and the canary and 1973's little mother and also his last released film as it is an r rated adult take on the prince and the pauper with the main character being to look like female friends one of them being a high class jet set a girl and other being an international high priced prostitute as they switch lives for a temporary time with the jet set a levy finding herself in monaco having plenty of love encounter while the high priced levy does her best to keep her friends engagement set life the same as it is co-directed with french director gerard lobu the princess and the call girl plays out like an mainstream aimed version of mads girls hardcore films in the way it is structured with most of the love scenes left off screen although there are sides of feet and hands shown and there is some nudity with levy briefly seen nude as she handles her challenging role pretty well amid the rest of the cast as they contribute decent performances and mads gur doing a superb directing job as the makes the most with the toned down erotic pace of the film making the princess and the call girl a decent celluloid slice of late night cable television pair with victor bevin sana hall Christina Swing, Scott Plank and John Polito. Mads Gurr next made what wound up being his last film which was the unreleased The Sins of Elsa. A 1985 soft core feature that used a few unreleased test footage scene from the opening of Misty Beethoven with French star Beatrice Harnois and starred Lynn Michael and Helga Swan The Princess and the Call Girl is soft core otter Redley Mads Gurr's skin flick version of Mark Twain's The Prince and the Pauper
it centers around a demure virginalgic who switches places with a looker like upscale prostitute so she can get some experience in before her wedding night predictably complications arise when they are unable to switch back in time for her engagement party this flick squanders a potentially awesome premise seriously you know you are in trouble when the scenes that set up the plot are far more interesting than the scenes of heavy breathing what's particularly damning about the princess and the call girl is that a lot of the love scenes don't feature much skin or happen off screen the thing that really pissed me off about the film is the fact that a lot of the love scenes are heavily built up but don't deliver take for example the lesbian massaging maid sequence it starts out hot and heavy with her rubbing her hands all over levy but then someone walks in on them and the maid scurries off Why build up a potentially hot scene like this and then offer no good damn pay off This may be the first skin flick in the history of time that sets out to give its male audience blue balls I'd also like to point out that this movie 